Hey guys, welcome back to another Kaleon Flamingo video. In this video we're going to look at Dapper. So in our last video we created our Kubernetes backend and frontend and we connected it uh, using regular Kubernetes uh, cluster IP service. So in this one we're going to look at Dapper which is an open source uh, distributed application service. So as we can see here it has service to service invocation which is what we're going to be looking at today. It has state management. Uh, publish and subscribe. So basically, like if you want to send messages to a bunch of services and or, or subscribe to messages, uh, resource binding and triggers, actors, and observability, and even secrets. So like it connects to the uh, many of the uh, secret services such as Azure Key Vaults and uh, Vault and all, all, all other different. Uh, Secrets today. We're just going to look at service to service invocation. Um, so basically, how Dapper does it is it injects a sidecar to your service, and then it takes care of the mapping. Uh, in this time, we're going to use Kubernetes, but it's designed for any microservice architecture, and it uses HTTP or gRPC uh, communication between these two services. So there is no need for an SDK. There is no need for anything. It's language agnostic, plus platform agnostic. So it's very easy to uh, change the invocations from one to another. So basically how it works is your service will make an HTTP request to your Dapper runtime or a gRPC can be either. In this video, we're going to do HTTP request. In the next one, we're going to do gRPC. And then Dapper finds uh, the Dapper runtime of the service B, and then it makes a call to service B. Service B makes any uh, logic that it has to do. It returns it to to its local Dapper runtime, and then that Dapper runtime returns it to the original Dapper runtime of service A and returns it to service A. And so here they have it kind of like how they do it in their calculator sample that they use, which they use different languages to show that it can be any language and it's agnostic. Basically in Kubernetes they have like a container, sorry a pod, which has the Dapper operator, which is the one that manages Dapper and injects the, the sidecars and everything. And then in each pod that you put uh, the annotation to inject Dapper, it's going to inject Dapper and it's going to keep track of where it is to be able to send information. So then this one will send it to, as you can see, like sidecar to to the other sidecars. It will send information and connect them all. So let's get to the code. So we're gonna go first to the back end. So the front end, uh, sorry, the back end won't need any code changes. The only thing it's gonna need is in its YAML file under template, um, under metadata. We're just going to put annotations and then we're enabling Dapper. We're setting up the ID. This can be any ID you want to call the service. You, you'll see how we use it later. And then this is the port that you're connecting. So this actually it's port 80 because that's where the application, the container is listening. But it could be any other port that like your application is listening on. Um, so we go ahead, we save that, and then we just have to go to the front end. And I think, no, I do not have it open. Then in counter, we're going to change the URL. So right now we're call, calling the service URL. We're going to change it to a local host, which is where the Dapper sidecar is listening to. So it's always listening in uh, 3500 for REST APIs and then V1 is always V1. And here we're telling it to invoke a REST API to the cubes backend. So that goes back to this name. So whatever this name is. And we're calling a method and the method name is weather forecast. So now let's go. We have to create and push the point, uh, 
So since we changed the code, we're just going to change the front end and deploy to the front end. Oh, I have to deploy the front end. And then we go to values. We change this to V2. Very important. We have to set up Dapper in, in, in the cluster, which we haven't done. Um, so we're going to add the Helm repo, create the namespace for Dapper. And then we're going to install Dapper and see that it gets installed. And now that Dapper is initiated, before we forget, let's go back to our uh, templates and to the front end. We also have to inject the sidecar so it knows to send the data there. As you can see here, I, I didn't specify the, the port that the app listens on because the app is not going to be receiving anything. If you want, you can also add the port just as we did in the back end. It's going to be bi-directional or that service is going to be called by other stuff. And now that we have that, we can go ahead and deploy the chart. All right, and it's all running. So if we go here and we reload, we're able to get the data through Dapper. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.